The worst thing for creative people is to not be creative because they just die. It's like maybe you're a tree with a few major branches, you know? That's your personality. So if you're extroverted, man, you can't be cut off from people because you just wither. And if you're agreeable, you have to be in an intimate relationship or you die, you know? And if you're conscientious, man, and, you, and you're unemployed, you're just going to eat yourself up because you have to have a duty and you have to carry a load because you just can't stand it otherwise. And open people have to be creative. They have to be because otherwise they die. They don't have any vitality. They're cursed with the necessity of putting a foot out into the unknown and making sense of it. And then they're also cursed with the necessity of trying to make a living while they're doing that, which they can't. It's almost impossible to monetize creative action, as many of you who are creative will no doubt find out. It's very, very frustrating. It's not that creative action is without value, right? Because the creative people are entrepreneurs and the creative people revitalize cities and the creative people make things magnificent and beautiful. You think about what's happened in Europe over the last thousand years, say two thousand years, this amazing, unbelievable collaboration to make things so beautiful that they're, they're jaw-dropping when you walk into them. And you think about the economic value of that, right? I mean, I think it's, it's either France or Spain that's the most visited country in the world. It's one of those two. I think there's more tourists in France than there are people most of the time. And part of the reason for that is it's just so damn beautiful. You just can't stand it. And you think, what's the economic value of that? It's absolutely incalculable. And what's interesting, too, is that you build that beauty in, and then the farther away you get from it in time, the more valuable it becomes, right? Instead of decaying, it has exactly the opposite effect. Its value magnifies, and one of the things that I'm deeply ashamed of as a Canadian is that our sense of beauty is so underdeveloped, we're so primitive. It's not even primitive, that's the wrong word, because I don't know what it is. It's second rate, it's second rate at least. It's terror too, because people are afraid of beauty, but the conservatives really have a problem with this in particular, because conservative people tend not to be that creative by temperament. It, it's a mystery to me because they should be concerned with economic development, and beauty is so unbelievably crucial to economic development that it just yells out at you, you know? Anyway, so that's what artists are doing. And so one of the things I would say is buy a damn piece of art, you know? Find one that really speaks to you, and, and buy a piece of art because you invite that into your life. Look out if you do it, if it's a real piece of art, because you'll also get a, you know, a little introduction to the artist, and then that'll seep into your life, and that'll change things like mad. But it's really, it's unbelievably worth it. It opens your eyes to the domain of the transcendent. That's the right way of thinking about it. A real piece of art is a window into the transcendent. That's what it is. And you need that in your life because you're finite and limited and bounded, right, by your ignorance and your lack of knowing. And unless you can make a connection to the transcendent, then you don't have the strength to prevail.